close your eyes. Don't worry, I will lead you. I'm here to guide you. Trust me, you'll be safe. I'll paint a picture for you. Beautiful pictures, crazy history. The project literally started on this, this ground 11 years ago. We sat here with students and we took a tour very much like we did today and we had no idea what to talk about. So there was a Jew, a black man, and a freestyle rapper from Hamburg here with students trying to figure out how to talk about the Second World War and how to talk about what happened here on this ground. And I didn't know what to say. What I would like to tell you is not only the story of Ravensbrück in general, but very often with the stories of survivors. What you can see around here are also survivors. The trees. The trees marking the first camp street. Ravensbrück was the central women's concentration camp in the Nazi Germany. At about 130,000 women were brought here from all over occupied countries and there were at about 40 satellite camps. A lot of people stayed away from the prisoners because it was so easy to see them as subhumans after they were living under conditions where the SS people tried to dehumanize them. And maybe the SS, or for sure the SS, did this also to make it for them themselves easier to kill them. Sound was what they like. Silence was what they want. Sound was what they did. Silence was what they forced. Sound, it was here. Silence, it's now here. Sound was here long ago. Silence is no longer here because of us. The silence is the way that our parents or our grandparents don't tell us what happened in the past. The silence is also maybe our lack of interest and curiosity in the way that we don't ask questions. And then the sound part is really about, you know, making noise and telling the stories and finding connection and knowing who you are. That's the sound. The sound is what we have to do, the stories we have to tell to the next generations and to our generation so we have a connection to the past. Prisoners in Ravensbrück tried to document what they had seen. And some of them were already artists. They had to do their work in the secret and with a high risk for their lives. So we have in our collection a lot of material which is art from the camp itself or from the post-war period when artists who had done art in the camp tried to redo what they had done before. I think that it's very great that we have the opportunity to participate in this project because I think that all of us are interested in history, yeah. but at this project we really get the opportunity to connect art with the history and to express our own feelings through art. And I think that this is a unique opportunity and that we will never get that again anywhere. I saw a little butterfly flying over the dark black stones mm. and I was like, wow, he's still alive. And I was like, oh my God, it's so nice. Mm, yeah. And I was very touched. Every, everybody will, will have the chance to record. 
so that your voice will be heard. I, I would love everybody's voice to be in the recording. I really believe deeply that if I ask you the right questions, you guys are brilliant. You have everything that you need inside your minds. It's just about getting it out of your minds onto the paper. We don't want to reenact it. We want to create this, like I said, this dissonance, this, because the place is so powerful, it, do, it does some work for us. So we want to create this feeling of, I'm feeling this way, I'm hearing this thing, and I'm seeing this, and how does this all work together? And my job is to shape it. And so when it's there, I can shape it much easier, and you guys did a great job. Does she need to lean, or does it capture her? Hmm? I need to lean into does, the mic. Does she need to lean in, or no, does she, no, no, she can no, stay? I do all this. You can yeah. okay. stay totally relaxed. Yeah. So, okay. and other things I will try to do. So, so just as you want to do. Um, I want to say that I love you, but my mouth is so shut. Shut away from your strong perfume, from your loving gaze. Okay, so okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, be silent now, and we start the recording. I want to say that I love you, but my mouth is sewn shut. Shut away from your strong perfume, from your loving gaze, from your warm embrace, from gestures that aren't for me. I'll say it in the silence. Please, hear me. I really appreciate more, uh, like for example, that we, that I don't know even that I have something to eat, that I really have it, that I, you know, really have, uh, I don't know even, uh, water to shower and a bed to sleep. Shoes. After the, yeah, after the, the guided tour in a, in a concentration camp, when I heard that they even don't have, like, their own privacy, that they, they didn't have anything. So yeah, I really, like basic like, things were yes. taken away from them. After that, you really start to appreciate small things. You know, there's that path when uh, there are trees next to the path. And I looked to the trees and I thought that they are not as green as the trees uh, surrounding the place. So they are not just that green. and. The trees are like that. They they knew they knew what happened yes, there. They 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 saw it and they felt it. That and that's why they are not that just not that green. Not just they are not filled with life. Whenever we get in our guided tours to the lake, people are starting with fantasies about was it possible to escape from the camp while swimming through the lake? And then we have to remind them that the prisoners were guarded all the time. There was little chance to get to the lake without guards and that liberty was not waiting on the other side, but a lot of Nazi Germany with people calling immediately the police if they would have seen an any prisoners without guards.
I have this feeling that I've learned to cope with these strange places that have this awkward and really horrific history behind them. Because uh, before this trip, uh, I used to feel just out of a place and I wouldn't eat whole day, I wouldn't smile whole day, wouldn't do anything pleasant for myself. And now I'm starting to think that I'm allowed to do that, that I'm bringing like happiness into this place. Uh, it's gaining something from what we're doing here. For me, I can only speak for me, it's much more powerful to see someone standing in this place talking about um, eating sweets and, and being with their friends and the blue skies and the beautiful roses. Because to me, as an audience member, I think of this place and I think of the dreams and the wishes and the visions and the wants of people, of human beings, and I notice the space between those things and my heart breaks and I think about the people in the past and I think about you guys. You are the potential, you are the future. You are right now and you are the future. And this project for me is no longer about the past. This project is about making sure that we have a future. Sound for me is noise, calm, speaking, relaxation, working, detachment, music, well-being, beating, peace, moving, oppression, city, fear, people, whisper, living, void, life, death. Silence for me is life, observing, harmony, thinking, expression, feeling, openness, nature, yelling, forest, screaming, still, chaos, peace, monster, sleeping, nightmare, resting, shaking, night, trembling, darkness. Hopefully, even though something horrible happened here, we in this week that we've been together can do something to add a layer, something different. We have now this experience here together and, we, and it's okay to laugh here. It's okay to have a good time here. It's okay to create a relationship here. And in doing so, we actually have an opportunity to shift the energy of the space. So it's, I mean, it's everything. It's good, it's bad. I mean, it's, it is really everything. This place has been so dark and now we're bringing some light into it. Sound in the silence, sound in the silence, sound in the silence, sound in the silence. 